Hi all, I'm just going to give you a few seconds to enter the room and uh, we'll get this underway. All right, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're joining us in the world. Thank you very much for joining. By way of an introduction, my name's Aaron Hill, and I've, I'm the one of the market analysts here at FP Markets. So the, as you can tell by the, uh, the title from uh, the welcome slide, which I hope you can see, guys, is uh, we are going to be looking at uh, the Dow theory and uh, showing some setups using the Dow theory. Now, I will be looking at the works of Robert Ray, uh, his book on the Dow theory. I'll also be touching on works of Jack Schnapp's uh, book, Dow theory for the 21st century. I'll also, uh, if you if you're interested, of course, if you find that you 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 you're actually interested in in using the Dow theory, another highly recommended trader uh, I, I, um, is Gary Burton, who works with FP. If you go back to the archives, you will actually see he did present or produce a webinar. On Dow theory, and it's certainly one to watch. All right, guys. As usual, disclaimer: the this informa the information contained in this material is intended for general advice only. It does not take into account your investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs. FP Markets has made every effort to ensure the accuracy of the information as at the date of publication. Simply put, what I, what I say, show, or even question here is solely educational and does not constitute investment advice. All right, on the screen, we have a brief a, an agenda for today's presentation. As you can see, the starting point is introduction to Dow theory. Who's behind the creation of Dow theory and things like this? There are actually a number of people, so this should really open your eyes to the uh, designers behind the theory, if you will. We'll then turn, uh, turn things over to a comprehensive understanding of its components. It is here we'll deep dive into the main elements of the approach, uh, the Dow theory components, if you will. And of course, finally, well, not finally, but um, we'll be looking at trading with the Dow theory, and then we'll round things off with a Q&A. If you can leave questions to the uh, to, until the end, that would be great. But you know, if uh, this will avoid disrupting the flow. But as usual, if there is a question that relates to the slide um, that we're discussing, then by all means, do fire fire away any questions, and I'll try to answer them live. Look, Dow theory is not anything new. In fact, it's over a hundred years old. So the main gentleman behind the theory is Charles Henry Dow who was the founder of the uh, financial news service, uh, the Dow Jones Financial News Service, excuse me, and part owner as well as editor of the Wall Street Journal. I'm sure the Wall Street Journal needs no introduction as it's a very, very popular news service. Now, a little bit of history on, on Dow. Dow was actually the first to create an index that measured the overall movement of, of US stocks um, and I think that really that consisted of 11 companies. And this was first introduced as far back as 1884, as you can see. Uh, so as you can see, the Dow index goes back more than a century. Now, in 1896, I believe Dow created the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and that consisted of 12 companies. Um, and then a year after that, we saw the creation of the rail railroads index um, which today is known as the dow jones transportation average so of course um back in those days of charles dow the primary transportation mode uh, was of course uh, the railroads so the idea behind behind this was that uh, dow uh, would take signals from the Dow Jones Industrial Average and also the railroads to confirm their movements. So we're looking for two averages to confirm each other. The idea behind this is really that the rails index 
that the, the, the rails, the railroads would deliver their, the raw materials to uh, the mills of the industrial corporation. Now, I believe he passed away in 1902 and left behind what you would call fragmented statements and observations in the uh, Wall Street Journal. Uh, you see that Dow never actually organized his observations. He never really, um, he, didn't, he didn't even coin the term Dow theory. Now, the term Dow theory was actually coined by this gentleman here, Samuel Armstrong Nelson. Um, and I believe it was 19 zero, uh, 1902, uh, an, an analysis of Dow's uh, Wall Street Journal editorials. He, he created, uh, with, a, uh, with an analysis of Dow's editorials, we saw, we saw the birth of the ABC of stock speculation. So I think Nelson was also the first, uh, as I said, the coin, to, to coin the term Dow theory. Um, and, and what it does is it tries to explain the Dow's, uh, Dow's theory in a more practical manner, manner. Now, if you're interested, guys, this is this this book is actually still available in print. I did, did check this on Amazon and uh, uh, Goodreads, I think it is. Uh, this is still available in print if you're interested. Uh, subsequent to this, we saw William Peter Hamilton take to the stage and he further refined the theory. Uh, through a series of articles in or editorials in the Wall Street Journal from 1902 to 1929. Uh, Hamilton, as you can see, Hamilton also wrote the stock market barometer in, um, I think this was 19, 1922, which is, which is still available in most bookshops and really, really tried to further our understanding of the Dow theory. Now, I must point out, point out that it was Hamilton who actually served under uh, Dow and uh, essentially did carry on his works and really became a, a popular feature in the Wall Street Journal until his death in, I think it was 1929. And look, what, it, what he did was he did a really good job of proving that Dow theory was a method of forecasting the stock markets. As Dow, as you can imagine, he created these indexes and only really, and because of his early passing, he only really had, I think it was around five years of data to work with. Hamilton clearly had more, much more data samples to um, test and prove, validate the theory. So in 1932, we had Robert Ray enter the scene. And Robert Ray further refined the analysis of Dow theory in his book. Um, and this was through the editorials of Dow and Hamilton. So Ray's book is actually titled The Dow Theory and is one I actually own. So I would recommend, it's a good read. I would recommend this book um, if you're interested in the Dow Theory. Now, Ray wrote in his book that the reason behind right, uh, producing this book was to reduce the Dow Theory to a manual for those wishing to use it as an aid in speculation. And really, he, he openly admitted that it was only a small part of the subject matter that represents his original work, Ray's original work. Um, mo as I said, most of the, if you, if you do actually buy the book or you own the book, you'll see in the appendix, there's a, there's a, a number of pages that uh, relate to Hamilton's um, editorials. And that's really where he took his, his work from and then distilled it down to a theory that was easily, uh, that could be easily applied. Look, and my presentation is largely based on this book, uh, Robert Ray, but I also, I also um, actually in Ray's book, he, he organized the theory into a set of assumptions and also theorems. Now, I also recently found the work um, of Jack Schnapp. Um, this is a great book, a fantastic book, actually, um, and a much easier read than, than Robert Ray's book. Um, and it's titled Dow Theory for the 21st Century. Now, Jack is an, an editor at the DowTheory.com, along with a gentleman who goes by the name of Manuel Bly, who kindly answered some of my questions uh, when developing this presentation. Therefore, look, be sure to check out their website to further your, if you're interested in furthering your education in Dow Theory. Now, before we get into the specifics, I just really thought it would be a good idea for me to, for any newer traders that are present, to really just briefly go over the, the uh, trend structure of, uh, of a trend, the structure of a trend. So on the screen, we have an uptrend, which is 
which consists of a series of higher lows, as you can see here, and higher highs. Look, I assume most of us are aware of this. As I said, it's just mainly for the newer traders. So we begin with an up move and then we retrace. So we form a higher high at this point, then form a higher low at this point, then break this high to form another higher high at this point. And this continues. So then we form a subsequent higher low and then a subsequent higher high. And this continues until the trend eventually breaks below the higher low. And then we have what's known as a downtrend. So, and this is the next slide. As you can see, look, the trend is, a downtrend consists of a, a series of lower highs and lower lows. Again, just really briefly, guys, I will go over this just so we're all aware. So the downtrend begins with a clear down move, which forms a lower low. Subsequently, we form a lower high, which doesn't obviously uh, penetrate the, um, the lower high formed at this point here. Then we form a, another lower low, which breaks the previous lower low. And this is that point there. And then a subsequent lower high and so on and so on and so forth until we break above the last lower high, which is generally in basic trend studies is viewed as a trend uh, reversal. But as you can see, as I'm sure you, 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 imagine, uh, you can imagine or you know, uh, there are a number of tools we use to, uh, to identify trend reversals, trend lines, moving averages and uh, all, that, all that good stuff. All right, so back on to, if there's any questions, guys, on the trend structure, please do let me know and I'll happily clear that up, uh, happily ping back to the slide so we all know where we are. Now, before we get into the, really the specifics, Ray makes it clear that to begin working with Dow theory without any reservations, now these are Ray's words, not mine, there are three hypotheses and there are a number of theorems that must be accepted. Now, the three hypotheses, as you can see on the screen, consist of manipulation, averages, discount, everything, and the theory, the theory is not infallible. Now, I will go over most of these in detail. Uh, the theorems are Dow's three movements. Now, this, this section here is really what got, uh, really what pulled me into the Dow theory. It really made sense how they how Dow theory structures trend and uh, really makes you understand how the how a trend is uh, uh, forms, and I will go over this in detail. Both averages must confirm. This is something we'll also go over in detail because it's a huge part of the Dow theory. Uh, determining the trend, uh, this is another key part, and then I'll also touch on. Well, I won't really touch on the relation of volume to price movements as I've had it cleared by a number of Dow theory practitioners that. Volume does not really play a huge part in uh, their identification of Dow theory. There are also another handful of um, uh, theorems, which were lines. This is essentially the range. I will, I will touch on this, I, I believe, as we, as we progress. We'll, um, the, the theory also looks at uh, double bottoms and double tops. You'll actually find Ray did not take too kindly to double bot tops and bottoms, but I believe in Jack Schnapp's book, he, he finds that they are of value. Um, and there's, there's also a theorem regarding in, uh, individual stocks. Now, this, is really, this, this slide is really just to give you a broad view of uh, the theory's components. I as I said, I will be diving into these in more, uh, the more important elements in more detail. This is, as I said, just, uh, just to give you an idea of how the theory is constructed. All right, so I thought I would begin things with the averages discount everything. I'm sure we've heard of this. Most technicians have heard of this, um, this, this, this phrase. Um, this was taken from my book. So I'm just going to briefly read this out. The fluctuations of the daily closing prices of the Dow Jones rail and industrial averages afford a composite index of all hopes, disappointments, knowledge, uh, and knowledge of everyone who... Uh, knows anything of financial matters and for that reason the effects of coming events excluding acts of god and are uh, and uh, um, are always properly properly discounted in their movement the averages quickly appraise such calamities as fires and earthquakes so basically what it's saying is the market reflects all available information everything there is to know everything there is to know is already reflected in the markets according to the theory 
uh, through price. In other words, everything you need to know about a security, about a currency, about anything can be found in its price uh, movements. Right. So this was something I found. Um, I found this was an excellent piece from Hamilton that was noted in and, and really, really did sum this up. So the market does not trade upon what everybody knows because it doesn't make didn't make sense to me that didn't but upon what those with the best information can foresee. And I think this really does a good, a good job of rounding up what they mean, what the Dow theory means when it says the averages discount everything. All right, the next one, Dow theory is not infallible. The, the Dow theory is not infallible, an infallible system for beating the market. It's successful use as an aid in speculation requires serious study and the summing up of evidence must be impartial. So you must be objective as we, as we, as most of us should be in trading. Anyway, uh, the wish must never be allowed to father, father the thought. So really the theory is not infallible. It's pretty much self-explanatory, right? Uh, mo as most technical, as most technical strategies and uh, fundamental strategies, there are no, there will be times that the system does not perform. There are no guarantees in trading and investing. So I don't really need feel the need to really go over this in much more detail um, as it's pretty, as I said, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Now, Dow's three movements. This is where, this is, this is where it really, as I said, it really, really interested me in this method. And there are a number of accounts where this isn't, this isn't a system that's not proven. If you go, if you visit Jack Schnapp's um, website, they have a long history of uh, a long trading history. You can see the um, the the performance of the of the Dow theory system. It's it's impressive. Uh, uh, that's all I can say. It's very very impressive, and um, it's certainly something I would encourage you to. This is a system I would certainly encourage newer traders to investigate and uh, uh, and look into. So, Dow's three movements. We have the we have what's known as the primary trend, we have the secondary trend, and we also have what's known as daily fluctuations. So in the order of importance, the primary trend really should garner the most attention. As remember, it is the trend according to the, the primary trend according to the theory is inviolate, meaning it cannot be manipulated. So the primary trend the overall trend cannot be manipulated. Look, this is the major, this is the overall, you know, the bull bear trend of the market and can maintain its structure for several years. Now, we must recognize that the trend, which the primary, which is the primary bull or primary bear market, um, on average, I have seen many practitioners state that the primary trend is generally longer than two years. So I guess a common question I had from some traders regarding the, the Dow theory is what time frame do you use to plot uh, the, the primary trend? So I guess as long as the chart time frames for the primary trend encompasses at least two years of data and it shows a clear trend over those two years, I think you could use either the daily or the weekly closing prices. For me, the weekly closing prices does a very good job as it, uh, as it really does um, filter out any of those small fluctuations. So I will go over this in detail right now. So once the primary trend is in place, it is assumed to, it is assumed to continue until proven otherwise. So the primary, move, uh, the primary market movement in terms of an uptrend is um, it, it, or, or a downward trend is a move that's interrupted by uh, by by uh, rallies or secondary pullbacks. So I will get into these shortly. So a primary trend are these points here. So let me just get the little trusty pen out. All right. So this is the primary trend move here, here, and here. Again, we're talking talking about a primary ball trend here. And these points here are your secondary corrections, okay? Primary bull trend, secondary corrections, primary bear trend. We have our secondary pullbacks at this point here. This is the primary bear trend. 
pretty 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 easy really but you have to think about um let me just get rid of these drawings actually because i want a clear canvas to work with so that's really the primary trend but uh for a, there, there are a number of phases that are incorporated within primary bull or primary bear markets. I will not read out all of these, uh, all of this text, but I will sum it up. So, a primary bull, uh, primary bull market, as you can see in chapter nine of Ray's book, works with broad, works with a broad upward trend that is interrupted by uh, secondary reactions. Um, there are three. Th there are three phases and um, which begins with reviving confidence. As you can see in the text there, it begins with, with reviving confidence. So what this is when the stocks begin to, uh, the, the stock average begins to bottom and turn higher. Uh, we then see stocks continue to rally. So think of momentum strategies, I guess you could hear, uh, or more upbeat corporate earnings. So the, the, the rally continues. And then finally, we hit what's known as a period of uh, rampant uh, speculation as prices advance on 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 expectations and hopes. Um, so this is a very dangerous time for uh, newer traders at that point there. So a primary bear trend, as you can see on chapter uh, on chapter eight, again from Ray's book. This also works from um, on on the basis of three principles. Um, so the first principle is the abandon uh, the abandonment of hope. At which stocks were purchased at purchased at inflated prices. So that these are those of invest, investors that who bought at the top. Uh, the second phase is selling due to decreased earnings, and the third phase is uh, really reflects distress, uh, distress selling. Uh, those that just want to get out of any uh, get out of the market at any any price possible. Um, there was something in uh, Jack Schnapp's book. That underlines the primary bear market in 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 three easy to uh, understand phases, uh, three C's. So it's complacency, concern. That's the middle parts. That's when um, the uh, corporate earnings begin to decline, and then you have capitulation, which is the just get me out at any price. Okay, so th this is something to bear bear in mind. So the primary trend, just to sum up. <clears throat> The primary and bear, uh, primary bull and bear trend are comprised of three phases. So, just really quickly, the three phases for the primary bull trend are reviving confidence, um, uh, continuation moves on the back of upbeat corporate earnings, and then rampant, you know, speculation. Primary bear trend is really when you you abandon your hopes of the stock. Um, uh, which were obviously purchased when 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 the stock market was at its highs, and um, and then you enter a phase of um, concern because of uh, um, um, uh, concern because of uh, uh, the decrease in corporate earnings, and then you hit uh, rock bottom. Basically, you hit rock bottom, and and you really you're in a period of distress and you really want to get out of the market. So this is really when uh, uh, capitulation hits, right? So uh, just remember that. Okay, so secondary trend. This is, according to Ray, this is when, this is the most deceptive. So I've tried my best to really highlight this. I didn't really want to go to the charts with this because I, re I, I wanted to instill a clear understanding of uh, the, the, the movements here. So... According to Ray, as I've just said, the secondary trend is the most deceptive. It essentially declines or retraces in a primary bull trend. So the primary bull trend is on the screen now uh, or pulls back in a primary bear trend. Now, according to Ray, these usually, uh, Ray's work, these usually last between, I think it's three, anywhere between three weeks and uh, several months. Now. I did want to highlight this because, right, we have the primary uptrend. These arrows here is your, are your primary uptrends. And these are the secondary trends here. Now, on a price chart on, say, so if we're looking at the primary trend in the weekly time frame, or even the, just say the monthly time frame, or even the weekly time frame, and we go down to the daily or H4 time frames here, what you'll see is you'll see a downtrend form here. A lot of traders can get caught out with this. That's not to say that you cannot trade these swings here, but it's just, just 
I would advise you to be aware of the overall primary trend always when you're trading. So if you're trading on the basis of, of this smaller scale trend, a downtrend, if you will, always understand that you are trading against the overall primary trend and um, uh, uh, do not expect it to continue for indefinitely, if, if that makes sense. So this is where I see a number of traders get caught out because when trade, when the price continues higher, they're, uh, they're almost taken back because they believe that the trend was uh, in, in full force within the secondary movement here. All right, so back to the, um, so look, it was said in raised hex that the secondary uh, trend, as you can see here, tended to retrace or pull back, as you can see here, between 33% to 66% of the primary trend since the termination of the last um, of the last preceding secondary reaction. So if we move this, whoops, I didn't mean to do that, sorry. If we move this to there, so the 33% to 66% of the retracement within this swing of the primary trend. So the last preceding secondary reaction, the higher low within the primary uptrend. But if you take a read of uh, Jack Schnapp's book, you, he will, you will note he says the uh, uh, minimum time frame for a secondary reaction can actually be between um, from, from just a few days on some signals. But usually he does point out usually it is weeks and can sometimes even uh, stretch to extend to months. Look, he also states that the 33% to 66% um, percentage requirement is, is um, that I just noted from Ray's work is just a generalization. It, is, it should not be, and basically it should not be taken as a fixed uh, requirement. Now, this is where it gets interesting, and this is where I do not see a lot of Dow theory practitioners um, uh, mention. Maybe they're looking at it, but they're not mentioning it, maybe. So I must be clear here that from a Dow theory standpoint, according to Ray, there must, and according to um, Jack Schnapp's work, but I will we'll touch on that shortly, there must be a bounce. There must be a bounce in either of the averages, so either the Dow or the transport average, that exceeds 3% to be a meaningful uh, be a meaningful potential top in an uptrend and uh, 3% to form a meaningful bottom in a down, down, uh, downtrend. This is really the only hard and fast number used in Dow theory, according to what I understand. Um, but through Schnapp's work, he states that it can actually be 4%. So what I mean here is, to form, just to give you a basic example here, we are in a primary uptrend, we have our secondary reaction, and then we start to form a, uh, a, a, um, a continuation to the upside. Now, for the uh, for a prime, for a classic bear market signal, let me just get the pen. I will go over this in detail though, um, shortly. But so we have the secondary trend. So we have the primary trend number one. We have the secondary trend number two, and we have a bounce to the upside uh, in point number three. Now, this bounce must exceed 3% of this secondary trend before we can take any bear market signals, so below this trough here. So if we extend only 2%, a break to the downside will just be an extension to the secondary trend, if that makes sense. But if we exceed this 3% mark or 4% in terms of uh, Jack Schnapp's work, then we can potentially look at a bear market sig uh, a bear market signal within the for one of the averages. Okay, this will make more sense as we progress. So I won't go over this um, much more. But it's um, these are really important movements to to be aware of, um, and must be fully understand understood to to apply the Dow theory. Now, finally, we also have what's known as minor trends or minor fluctuations. As, as their name implies, this tends to be, um, uh, look, these are really unimportant in terms of Dow theory, and many, many do agree with this. It's largely the primary trend, primary moves, and the secondary moves that are the most important. The daily fluctuations are not really taken into much consideration, and I think it goes, I think 
Ray and Chinap say both are unimportant. Both say that daily fluctuations are unimportant. Look, at its core, Dow theory is a trend following system. Is a longer term, it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty, pretty much a longer term trend following system focusing on the relevant highs and lows as, and, and essentially targeting those key pivot points on the chart. Now, both averages must confirm. So basically what the theory is saying here is that movements of the railroad and industrial stock averages should always be taken into account as one. So as the book states from Robert Ray, it states that the price average must be confirmed uh, by, by the other before a reliable conclusion can be drawn. So a question I often see asked about the Dow theory, and one I did also have a concern about when I first started looking at the Dow theory, uh, the, it was to do with the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the rail, Railroad Index. Are they still viable today? Well, according to um, Manuel Bly, again, he's an editor at the DowTheory.com and a very, very knowledgeable guy. Um, he says that it's actually more relevant uh, than ever. Than ever. So the Dow Jones and um, the uh, uh, Dow Jones Transportation Average. Um, we can also see that Jack Schnapp in his book uh, states that the rail the, the railroads index, which is now essentially the Dow Jones Transport Transport Index, is actually made up of twenty stocks. So this is made up of twenty stocks that represent at least six industries. And, that, and so you have airlines, you have air freight, you have you have railroads still, and you have trucking to give you just some examples. So you have a broad um, a broad um, uh, collection of uh, uh, transport stocks. So yes, according to Schnapp's work, the transport average and the Dow Jones Industrial Average are still very much intertwined. On this slide, so look, on this slide, as you can see, I am presenting the closing prices for the daily closing prices for at least three years. So as you can see, you can use the daily closing prices, but on the next slide, we have What's, uh, we have the weekly closing prices. Now, here we can see we have, I won't go into too much detail here, but I do want to point this out. Here you can see we do have confirmation of, I tried to line this up so it was nice and easy, but we first get confirmation in, um, so here is the primary uptrend, right? The primary uptrend, secondary correction here, follow through to the upside. And then we have a bit of a base forming, and then we have a, 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 um, a, a low formed, a lower high formed, and then we break down to the downside here. But this was not confirmed until late uh, later on the Dow. So once both have confirmed, uh, uh, broken to the, a fresh low, then we have a primary bear trend. So the Dow was in a primary bear trend, but right now, as you can see, the Dow, uh, the Dow, both the Dow transports and the Dow. Uh, the Dow index has rallied. But if you remember, we need a 3% correction here to hold before we can see, uh, before we can uh, determine that the primary trend is in play. You remember from the pri uh, previous slide, we'll go over this in detail with these setups, but at the moment, we are still in a primary bear trend as far as I understand things. And uh, we would need to see the higher low form at this point here, which must exceed 3% of this uh, correction here. Okay. Let me just get rid of those drawings. Um, any questions? On, uh, remember also that Schnapp says about the uh, regarding the 4%. So we, uh, you could even target 4% just to be safe. All right. So any questions, guys, please feel free. Okay, determining the trend. Um, this is a very this is very important and kind of really merges nicely with the previous slides in regards to the averages confirmation. So this example here, not the actual chart, but is 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 something that I read in uh, Jack Schnapp's work, and it really puts the idea across uh, of determining the trend very well. I thought. Uh, just to be clear, again, all credit goes to his work here. I'm simply repeating it, if you will. Now, 
he notes in his book that um, that a modern misconception is that both the industrials and transports must make, let me repeat this, must make all uh, new all time highs for a bull market to be in force. Um, that's just not true. So some have argued that the 60% move from the October low of 2022, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, um, <clears throat> the October low of 2022 to the May 2006 high, that's a 60% gain, um, was not a bull market because the 2002 all-time high was not engulfed. That was only engulfed in October of 2006, which would imply that the last, you know, the 80, I think it was 80 odd points from this high to this high, somehow change the status of the bull market, which I'm sure, as you can, as I'm sure you'll imagine, um, is not true. Uh, we have a question here. What moving average is used best for two MA confirmations? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by MA moving averages. Um, I've not shown any moving averages. Um, I, um, so I'm not sure what you mean. Are you talking about maybe filtering the price with moving averages? I've, see, I've seen some uh, traders do that. Um, so if you can maybe elaborate on your question a little bit more and I, I will address that, no worries. All right, so I hope that's really opened your eyes to determining the trend. We, we don't have to wait for all-time highs to form to really determine a trend. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I did mention that there were lines and there were uh, the, sub, uh, the theorems, lines, uh, volume, and also double bottoms and tops. Now, just to quickly go over it, lines are simply consolidations. Uh, and, and I think uh, Ray said that the, it's, it's a consolidation that takes up around 5% of, uh, uh, takes up around 5% of the uh, price movement. Now, volume must confirm the trend. This is something that uh, Dow recognized, but it's not something I use of, or, 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 or the guys behind the DowTheory.com use. So I won't really go into that. If you're interested, there's plenty of information on the site, but I don't really take into consideration the volume because as far as I'm aware, uh, the volume is really extended from the futures market anyway because you cannot directly trade these uh, indexes anyway. So um, in terms of double tops and double bottoms, um, Ray actually said double tops and double bottoms are, are little value in forecasting the price movement and has proved more deceptive more often than not. But Schnapp actually counters this and says he finds use in the double bottoms and double tops. Um, and if you're interested, do read his book. He goes into much more detail uh, in that. All right, so trading using the Dow theory. For the bull market signals, there are, there are a number of variations. Um, again, I use uh, either daily or weekly closing prices. Uh, first of all, let's look at bull market signals, as I said. Um, again, these are images taken from Schnapp's work, they, they just, they're just, they're just so, ba they're just so um, to the point. I just did not see the point, uh, the, 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 the point in me really recreating these and saying they're my own or anything like that. This is all Schnapp's work from his book, and all credit goes to him because it really, really does show how you can trade uh, using the Dow theory. In my opinion, it's a far better book than Ray's work as well. It just, it's just so clear and really opens your my, uh, eyes to Dow theory as, as, as a, as a, as a system to trade. Um, actually, let me let me throw a link in the chat box for Jack's work because it's a fantastic read and I would wholeheartedly uh, recommend it. Uh, there it is in the, again, look, I have no, no association with the guys there. It's just something I've found of use and I think passing it on, passing it on is, 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 is worthwhile because look, I've ne I never heard of this book. Uh, the only book I really heard of was Ray's work the um the Dow theory um so this is something that i would really recommend uh reading alongside ray's work as well to give you a, a, an overall idea of things so number one the most common buy signal is found uh, found in Dow theory is when a so let me just get the pen out 
So this is the prior, just, just to give you a little bit of context. These are the primary downtrends and this is the Dow, this is the transports, okay? So transports is here, the Dow is here and we're in a primary downtrend in both averages. And then we form lows at point one. So lows are formed on uh, in the transports and lows are later formed in the uh, on the Dow. Um, this is followed up with a bounce. Now, this point here would generally be looked at as the beginnings or maybe the early stages of a secondary trend. But 33%, this is not, not even close to 33% or even 66%. So it's just the beginnings. It's just a, potentially the beginnings of a downtrend. Oh, sorry, a secondary correction. Now, following this, we need to see point number three take shape, and that is a pullback to higher lows. As you can see, price pulls back. Following the early, early stages of a secondary trend, we, see, we want to see a pullback of more than 3%. Remember, Schnapp says 4%, but let's stick, stick to in excess of 3%. Now, if it does continue south at this point here, all we have is a continuation of the primary bear trend. Nothing more, nothing less. But if we see a continue a, 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 a higher low form, um, and this is the transports, and we break the highest lower high that was formed from the, um, the early secondary trend, then we have the beginnings of the, a signal. But it's not until we have the uh, Dow confirm, remember the averages need to confirm each other. So it's not until we have the second average confirm the move by also uh, closing above the lower high formed, uh, the lowest, the highest lower high uh, formed from the bounce uh, point number two. So here we have a buy signal. This is a very strong buy signal and signals the beginning of a primary bull trend. Now, as I said, there are four variations. So variation number two is a little bit more complicated, but um, it's, not, it's not really, to be, to be quite honest. If you remember in, 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 the, uh, in the presentation, I said at least one of the, um, uh, one of the averages must um, uh, uh, form a higher low, I think. So again, let me get the pen out. Okay, so primary downtrend again, bounce higher, early beginnings of a secondary uh, uh, pullback. And then we see a topping motion form in both the averages. And look, what happens is we, we get a, this is, this is probably a 3% move here, yeah, considering this, this is probably a 3% move. And then we have a higher low form. Uh, at this point here, and it doesn't break this low here, but one average does actually form lower lows. But according to Schnapp, his words were, this is inconsequential because we do not have confirmation yet. We do not have this average pulling lower as well. If we did have, then yep, it's all good for the primary bear trend to continue, but we don't. What we actually see is price form a higher high above the lower low formed, the highest lower low formed on the bounce here. Once or if we see price, uh, uh, the in this case, the Dow pull higher and break above, also break above the highest lower high at this point here, then we have a buy signal. Okay, so we're looking for confirmation here, guys. Oh, that's all we're looking for, confirmation of the two averages. As you can see, this average, just say this average formed last week, this average could confirm price two or three or even four weeks later. Um, we're just looking for that confirmation, which gives us that all important buy signal. Okay, on to the second, uh, third variation. Gets a little bit messy here. Um, we have market lows again. We have the bounce. Then we have the pullback. Again, the pullback in the transports, very nice. Uh, but we have a 3% pullback we've seen. But at point four, we only have one in the, uh, average that bounces higher. In this case, it's the transports. But at the same time, we have a divergence playing out, right? 
This is the Dow that's actually forming a lower low. All right. So we this is this is almost telling us that we could be uh, we at this point here we have a we have one bouncing uh, one one trading higher and breaking to higher highs past this highest lower high. And on the other hand, we have another one forming a lower low. So we have a clear divergence here. And at this point, you should not be trading the Dow theory. It's only once you get confirmation. So if this average, the transports turns lower and confirms the uh, breaks below this low here, the lowest low, then we have a primary bear trend still in play. But as you can see, the lower low on one index then at 0.6 forms a higher bounce um, and then gives us a confirmation for a breakup, which is a buy signal. Guys, you are more than welcome to have these slides. You're more than welcome to ask me questions, send me emails, and I will help you understand uh, uh, this. So the fourth variation for the bull market signal is a market low, market lows, as you can see, 0.1. Again, the second, the bounce, which is, as I've said, the beginnings of a secondary uh, correct uh, pullback. And then at point three, we have a 3% pullback and a new low on one index. And then another new low on uh, uh, the same index. All right, so we have a very bearish uh, movement forming on the Dow at this point. But only at point four, we have the transports bouncing higher. So again, we have clear divergence. At this point, what do we do? We do nothing unless we, until we get confirmation. Now, at this point, we have a break up. So a break up above the uh, highest lower high, which confirms, this is the confirmation signal here, guys, confirms that we have a buy signal. All right, so these are all bull market signals. Next one is bear market signals. Look, these are really just the mirror opposite. There's nothing different to the bull markets and bear market signals. They're just, in, uh, they're just um, the mirror opposite, as I've said. Right, so this is the classic bear market signal. Again, all these images are taken from Jack Schnapp's work, uh, from his book. As you can see, we are now in a primary uptrend, whereas before we was in a primary downtrend. Primary uptrend, we form highs at point one, we pull back. This is the uh, probably the early stages of a secondary correction at this point here. And then we uh, form lows at this point here. Now, at this point, we could go any way, right? We could see both averages go to the upside, which essentially confirms that the primary bull trend is in still in motion. Now, if I undo that work there, now we have the secondary correction, we have the pullbacks, uh, we have the uh, bounces occurring, which again have to be plus 3% to lower highs. These are the lower highs here, guys. So they're easily 3%, right? As you can see, we, we then see the transports break below the lowest higher low formed on the early secondary correction at this point here. And then later, we also see the, um, the, the uh, Dow break below its low here. This is not the signal here. It's the signal once it breaks below this signal, uh, this, this level here, the lowest higher low formed. All right, so once we have those two signals, we have what's known as a sell signal. You will see breakout sellers come in, generally come in strong at this point. And uh, it's certainly something to be uh, mindful of if you're, if you're looking at trend trading uh, strategies. Uh, there's only three variations for the uh, bear market uh, theory. Uh, bear market um, Dow, uh, bear market signals in Dow theory. Anyway, so we have pr again primary uptrend highs, second pullback. This is a secondary correction. We have the higher lows formed here, but on this case we have a three percent bounce. But one index in this case it's the Dow goes to a higher high. So again, we have um, a potential a non confirmation. I think it's called. So the transports has not confirmed the primary bull trend at this point. And instead, what it's done is it's pulled lower and broken below this higher low. So at this point, when price is here, uh, the Dow is here and the transports have broken below, we have a divergence on our, on our hands and um, it could go either way. But once price breaks, uh, once the Dow breaks below this, uh, the, the lowest higher low, 
we then have a cell signal on our hands. Finally, uh, a pretty messy one, uh, I guess you could say here. Again, highs formed within the primary uptrend. I'm sure you guys are getting the idea now. Secondary correction formed here. Higher lows at this point it formed here. Three, we have a bounce. One makes new highs, one being the Dow. Look, we can see, uh, and, and, and even it makes another higher, higher the Dow. But look what's happening. We have a clear, look, for anyone that looks at the RSI, look at just the price divergence between the RSI. It's exactly the same. What you've got here is the Dow forming higher highs, but the transports forming lower lows. All right, so you have a clear divergence at this point. And it is at this point, you cannot do anything in terms of Dow theory. You need to wait for that confirmation. And then we later like get that confirmation at this point here when the Dow subsequently breaks below that higher low formed here. Remember, the, we, we require 3% at these uh, pullbacks here. And it's here you get your sell signal. All right, so I believe there was another question. For example, EMA, SMA. Okay, so in terms of the, there was a question regarding the MAs. Look, I, I would not use an MA, to be honest, uh, with the this method. I, I know why you're using it to filter out the price action, but if you're using the weekly charts, that's really enough of a filter filter for me. Uh, that's that's enough. That, that shows what you need to see. And you can even, as I, as I showed you on the charts here, let me just show you, go back, go back, go back. Let me show you on the charts. Just bear with me. Um, these charts. This is the weekly chart, a line chart. This is all you really need. Um, it's almost, a, I know what you mean by a moving average. Instead of using the, um, um, the highs and lows, this really filters out the highs and lows because it's only focusing on closing prices. So no, I don't really have much to comment on the moving average. You can try it. There's no, there's no harm in trying it, um, but for me, I've never, never looked at that, uh, to be quite honest. So, um, in terms of further recommendations for furthering your study, again, look, pretty simple. Uh, Ray's work, the Dow Theory book, fantastic read. Uh, Jack Schnapp's book is an even better read, in my opinion. It's, it's actually what I would term as gold for Dow Theory, uh, for those interested in Dow Theory, because it really relates to our current um our current era if you will and again look uh, um, if you're interested in furthering your education uh, furthering your understanding of dow theory uh, gary burton again as i said who works with fp uh, did a uh, did conduct a webinar on um dow theory uh, some i think it was some years ago now but it's certainly still one to watch he goes over de in detail regarding the trends and things so um Yes, that's certainly something I would uh, consider watching. Q&A, guys, I don't see any questions, so I assume you've all understood what I've said. Um, so any comments or, or feedback to this, uh, to the event? Um, one second. I do see the questions. Bob, just bear with me. Um, any, any comments or feedback, please do send an email to either support at fpmarkets.com or market analyst at fpmarkets.com. They will be the best. So the market analyst at fpmarkets.com is probably the best way to get hold of the research team. Um, any specific topics you wish to see the team to cover, cover please do send your email over to uh, one of these emails. Uh, remember that, that there will be a recording of this presentation available on the usual routes, on the usual um, platforms, YouTube. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, sign up. You'll, you'll get all the latest um, uh, webinars then. And also the, uh, the FP Markets uh, webpage, we have under resources, a number of archived webinars, including Gary Burton's work. Um, also, uh, we, we've we consider visiting the FP Markets Academy. Uh, a link will be in the chat box shortly. And uh, this is certainly something where it's an ongoing process for us, but uh, it's, it's, um, it's one that we are working to produce a comprehensive um, teaching to, from beginner to advanced for interested traders. Right, so to the questions. So Bob, your question, is industrials and transport still relevant today? Look, I can only say what I've been told by those who have used this for years, Dow Theory, and I've, I've, uh, that was a question I had, um, of course. It is 
Um, the transport, as I said, it, it, encom- it includes a number of airlines, it includes airline freights, uh, railroads, um, trucking. So yes, it is it's still very much used today. And uh, look, just just if you need further proof of this system, the best site to go over to is the DowTheory.com. They have an incredibly impressive record there of uh this 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 theory this 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 system and the the results will will potentially blow you away so that's all i can say really to that bob um oh no worries okay so that answered your question regarding the ma um what is the code for dow jones and the transports. The code in trading view is DG. I think it's DGIA. Um, bear with me. Let me see. I did have that on the on the chart there. Here we go. DGI. Sorry, DGI. And for the uh, DGT for the uh, on trading view. I see a question there, um, uh, Michael. So DGI for the Dow index and DGT for the um, for the transports just have a look have a look and have a play with this the stuff that i've shown here today and uh, see how you get on all right so that seems to have covered most of the oh using a question from adam using candles wicks or bodies for breakouts um i use the closing prices for breakouts so i would want to see a closing price beyond uh the uh pivot points the lows or highs before i confirm and i think that's how they work at the dow theory as well all right so i think that's all the questions any more please do fire away uh, before i uh sign off okay it doesn't seem like it all right guys so look thank you very much for joining today i know i have thrown quite a lot at you um but look the emails let me just um let me just get to the end so i can throw the emails to you there we go um any, any issues guys just please uh, use these emails and i'll happily respond um uh, slides in your uh, what do you hear? oh fantastic so look michael the email is here just set, ping me an email at market analyst fpmarkets.com or for anyone here that's interested in these slides and i'll, I'll throw those slides over to you and uh, if it helps by all means fantastic and uh, any questions guys uh, please do um please do send me a, an email no worries or send the team an email so on that note, guys, on that note, uh, fellow traders, I bid you a farewell. I wish you a productive day or evening, wherever you're based in the world, and uh, catch you soon. Thanks for joining, guys.